In question two of our thermal energy transfer series, we ended off with this question, where a block of copper of unknown mass has an initial temperature of 65.4 degrees Celsius. The copper is immersed in a beaker containing 95.7 grams of water at 22.7 degrees Celsius. When the two substances reach thermal equilibrium, this is really important, this means that their final temperature will be the same. The final temperature is 24.7 degrees Celsius. What is the mass of copper block? So the copper goes from being 65.4 and then submerged into 22.7 degrees Celsius. So it's going from hot to cold. It's technically losing its heat. And what's gaining its heat is the water. And since the system is composed of only copper and water, we can say that the heat loss of copper equals the heat gain of water. And algebraically, you can write this as Q sub copper is equal to negative Q sub H2O. It really depends on how you interpret this. So the heat lost by copper is gained by water. We're not told the mass of copper, and that's what we're looking for. So I'll put M sub Cu is equal to question mark. The initial temperature of the copper, which I'll represent as T sub I Cu, is equal to 65.4. The mass of water is 95.7 grams, and it has an initial temperature of 22.7 degrees Celsius. The final temperature is 24.2 degrees Celsius. Let's go ahead and find the mass of copper. To do this, we'll need to use the same formula we used in question number one, shown right here. And we have Q, which is equal to M times C sub S, the specific heat capacity for the substance. And since Cu is our first one, we'll find that out soon using a table, times the delta T is equal to M times C sub S times delta T of water. And it doesn't matter where you put the negative. Over here, over here, it doesn't change the final answer. Now let's substitute the things we know. We don't know M of copper, so we'll leave that the way it is. We can find out what the specific heat capacity of copper is using any table that your textbook provides. According to the table I have accessible to me, the specific heat capacity of copper is 0 0.385. And delta T is easy to find. We have the final, which is 24.2 minus the initial, which was 65.4. The mass of water is 95.7 and the specific heat capacity of water according to this table is 4.18. Delta T can be found by taking the final which is 24.2 and subtracting it from 22.7. Now we can find out what M is equal to. This is actually a simple calculation relative to question number one. In question number one we had to do a lot of algebra. Here all we have to do is multiply these two numbers multiply all three of these numbers and divide the product of these three numbers by the product of these two. So we have, using our calculator, 95.7, I'm starting over here, times 4.18 times 24.2 minus 22.7. Notice that I put these two numbers in brackets. It's important that you do that. It helps your calculator understand what you're doing. So you have 600.039, 600.039. Again, using our calculator for these two factors, 0 0.385 times in brackets, 24.2 minus 65.4. And at this stage, you can multiply this number by this negative out here too, and that's a good idea moving forward. This gives us 15.862. 15.862 times M. If I take 600.039 divided by 15.862, I'll end up with the mass of copper. Let's write that down. So 600.39 divided by the number that I just found, and I end up with 37.8. 37.8. To the correct number of significant figures, if we take a look at our initial problem, they gave us three significant figures all throughout. It's a safe bet to use that if you haven't been following the number of significant figures throughout your calculation. So I'm doing a little cheating here, but it will work in this case. 
So we have 37.8, and it's followed by a 2. We can stop after this 8. The amount of copper here is 37.8 grams. And so there you have it. That is how to solve thermal energy transfer problems.